Welcome to Elden Ring, my name is Nilaus and this is a guide to Eastern Limgrave on all of the sub-dungeons and uh, mini-bosses that are in those dungeons. So if you are interested in that, so keep watching and uh, if you want uh, more guides then let me know in the comment section below what kind of guides you'd like to see here on the channel. You can use uh, the play scrubber below the video to jump to different chapters if you are looking for a guide on a specific one of these uh, dungeons. So let's dive in and jump into the first one. We're going to start with Stormfoot Catacombs. This is one of the easy ones. Uh, so to get this one in and uh, before you go into any of these dungeons, I would highly, highly recommend that you take, uh, you get your Ashes of War, the summons of, and uh, you get the summons of wolves and they use those pretty much. So here, when you, uh, as soon as you go in, you will be ambushed by this little annoying dude. And uh, just get in there, pull him and go back. And then we have one more. And then we can just go in and take care of him. Wait for him to attack, and we do it. I like the counters. That it's like the guard counter is super amazing. So we get some resin, and we get some. Oh, that was it. Only some resin. That was that much. Moving deeper in. Here we have the door. This door is the whole purpose. We want to open the door so we get access to the boss fight. And in order to do that, we have to pull the lever that's right in front of us up here at the top floor. So we need to fight our way there. I'm gonna go in here so I don't get hit by the ones up top, and then some will. Drop down, yes, and we can kill them down here much more easily. And there are now two here. And apparently this guy doesn't want to get killed. Hmm. Pick the flower. And we finally got him. Let's move in. All of these, done, all of these locations will usually have an ambush like this one. You go in and you see the flames and you stare at the flames instead of looking for the guy who will fall, you fall down on you. So in this case, I know it's there. So that's why I'm turning around and keeping my block up so we can easily get the counter. All right, so this uh, is here. Yeah, you just wait for it to go away and then you run to the first safe spot at this location. There's also flames from coming from the right, but they're in a safe spot here. So I move forward because there is actually a little item behind here. Don't know what it does, prattling paint. We wait for another burst of flame and then we'll uh, move back to the next flame cannon. If you stand at this point, you're safe from the flame. Kind of hard to know when you're, where you're safe, but you're safe here. Moving in, go to a safe spot. And now the next part is pretty dangerous. So, uh, because there are a lot of these little gargoyles. So I run in and then I grab the stuff. I get some smoldering butterfly, totally not worth it. Five, three of those. And then I run, 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 run here and then as they come after me they all get roasted that was three of them roasted like that and there's still one shooting so let's see if we can pull him in by luring it to the flames yep there we go and flames take care of that one as well so that's an easy way to take care of all four of them instead of fighting them in a close uh, close quarter get up the ladder so we can get up to the point where we are going to unlock I'll turn the lever, turn around the corner, and up oh, there we go. Take care of uh, the, the little statue before it wakes up. And there is one more. Happily goes into our guard counter and uh, solves itself. Now we want to jump uh, down here, but uh, not just yet because we can get a tiny bit of loot uh, more and then a bit more XP. So we go in here, there's always one, and then you, they want you to run in. But then there is a, another one, so we just pull back. There, and we do the guard counter and take care of that, and then we can move into the next one. I'm kind of wonder, worn, worried about that being an extra one, but uh, that's not relevant. We just take care of this. And we get a Wandering Noble Ashes. Really cool to get some of uh, these ashes. I. I Try them on and see which one you like. There are not any one that are distinctly better. I really like the wolves. So that's the one I'm using uh, for all of my playthrough. There's one more little guy over here. So let's take him out. And at this point we've cleared all of the trash mobs in this little mini dungeon. And all we need to do is pull the lever. That opens the door at the distance. There we go. Somewhere a heavy door has opened. Great. Now all we need is the boss fight, so at this point you want to make sure that you've cleared this with minimal use of, uh, of Estus or Crimson Flask. But if you need, you can go back and heal at the at the Grace and then come in. The door will not unlock again, so it's uh, you can replenish your flask if you need to. 
Now for this boss fight and pretty much all boss fights, you will see that it's uh, I always start by summoning the wolves because that just makes it so much easier. I am going to be focusing on fishing for uh, R2s, uh, charge R2s so we can get the knockdown and like that and then of course stand in flames because that's uh, I want to sh I wanted to show you how uh, what not to do it's a guide right and again it's it will kill the wolves eventually but uh, you should be able to kill it before this is pretty early game and that is the one we look for yep so we get the visceral attack and that deals a nice chunk of damage and you can do a power attack immediately if you can hit of course that's come here comes the wolf, uh, fire. Unfortunately, I lead it right into my wolves, and one of them is dead. That's another one gone, so we uh, don't have a lot of time. So I just wail on to get it down there. And there we go. We killed the first boss and cleared the first the mini dungeon. So onwards to the next. You get some noble sorcerer's ashes for your trouble. This is uh, the grove, grove side cave and it's probably it's probably the first one you will find it's uh, pretty close to the starting starting point uh, the only the difficult part about this one is the fact that you need to get your have your torch out to be able to see anything in here now i make the mistake at this point to think okay the wolves are down there they can't jump up that cliff because i can't jump up the cliff so i can just proceed here and then i'll take him from that side unfortunately the wolves can climb and uh, they are climbing a lot so we are fighting a lot of random wolves here in, uh, in in the dark and just trying to uh, luckily they are coming up slowly so we are okay there I can do the counter again just slowly take care of them as long as it's one on one I'm okay nope didn't take care of that we can actually heal and try one more time get you to attack me nope, that uh, somehow doesn't hit me and we can now just jump down, right as well. And what we get here is a crack pot. That's a really nice little uh, consumable item or replenishable item. As going on here, there are a few more. A few more wolves, but they are sleeping, so it takes a while to wake up. So we just do a simple jump attack and counter the other one. Get whatever you have down here, some thin bones and some cave moss and some glowstone and get a few silver fireflies and then I think it's onwards to the boss fight let's get the torch so we can actually see what's going on here yes that looks like the gate there's a few more cave masks but then it is the gate for the boss fight again we'll see with this boss fight the strategy is pretty much the same at this point uh, again I really highly recommend getting those wolves before you go anything and if you doubt how that is you come at night time uh, to the church of l and then uh, it I, there's someone who gives it to you and that's uh just just get it and it'll make this so much easier you can see we're not actually doing much damage and all the damage comes primarily from wolves and there we go we got the knockdown and it's basically taking care of the beastmen of farmazula and that is the final straw. So we uh, clear that one. What do we get for our troubles? We get a flingbrick talisman. Here we have the Limgrave Tunnels. The Limgrave Tunnels is the one that I would recommend getting as early as you can get. And as soon as you have a weapon that you like, go here because you can uh, you get so many smithing stones and those will be like super handy. Golden Rune for. Did you see that on the elevator we jumped down halfway through? Because uh, there's almost always with elevators halfway through some jump off points uh, where you can get some extra goodies. That was a golden rune four, so that's a pretty nice thing to get at this uh, point. Handy uh, amount of extra runes, and we get the checkpoint. So this, uh, what I should say about this area is that if you get here too early, I put it in as the third dungeon, and if you get it a bit too early, then it can be quite tough to uh, to actually do. But you can sneak up very easily, get your visceral attack on him, backstab, and then a, <clears throat> a charge attack. Well, actually, we didn't get the charge attack here, but hey, somehow that didn't hit us. And then we take these in the uh, on the wall. That is the spinning stone. Now we want to take those we just saw over there, but in order to do that, we have to do it this way. So I go a bit back, and then I roll into these crates. He doesn't respond, but that means I can now get in and get a visceral attack on him. 
Quite simple. You can't get a visceral attack in unless you remove the crates first. Somehow I missed that. Alright, and now comes some rats. And uh, for some reason, rats are just the bane of my existence. As you uh, can see here, uh, just I'm trying to let them attack attack me, but I keep getting interrupted because there are too many. So what I probably should have done is just back up and then do a slash as they approach instead of waiting for them to be killed because I get interrupted all the time. Uh, alas, it's uh, it's okay. We we will get we we'll get our way through, and that is the last one. It's because I'm too focused on the guard counters at this point. Right, so we've now cleared that one. There's a little uh, side path in here that is totally worth going in there. Uh, there isn't really much in here, but there is one more smithing stone. So we're up to two smithing stones already in here, and that's enough for the first upgrade. And now we can, uh, at a leisurely rate, go into this side path. Again, highly recommend taking all of them because you get so many shots. This guy, you kill them, and it's an easy kill. And there we go, it's 92 XP for this, plus in this case, a smithing stone. That's the third smithing stone. So let's move on up at this point we can sneak attack him and we won't even aggro the other one it's pretty crazy how he, how dedicated to his work that miner is and that's that one doesn't even care doesn't even care and we can get another backstab to start off the next and you can see there are some smithing stones on the roof on on the wall we'll take him and that's our fourth smithing stone in here pretty good deal already and we're uh, not even very far. This is a bit bigger, this dungeon, than uh, the other ones. So when you get to this one, you go to the middle, and then you turn around. And at that, there is another drop-off. So let's take that drop-off. That gets us into a pretty sizable area here. Now this area, I granted, I make a mistake. There are two patrols, but it's so tempting to go in and take this guy. So you can go in and take him. And it's a bit risky what I'm trying, what I'm doing here get him and then I hurry up go back uh, which is kind of not what I should and then I go back in here and fall right into the patrol pattern but at least we get to see what they do they just spew fire that's just stay at a distance until they stop and then we can move in and they'll start again I'm trying to move around just to see how that works but anyway better tactic to kill things is to uh, hit them with the with your sword and that's good here there is a little thing this is not a smithing stone as we would have hoped it was but it's a glintstone scrap whatever that is and now here i'm being super careless i see the opportunity for a backstep and then i kind of forget the fact that there's another one next to us you can easily let him come closer and then move back again and you take it but uh, we get a bit in trouble here so i have decided to back off and let them go in here that's and then from here on, I can just take it with some jump attacks. Make sure that we dodge that and then jump in and get some attacks in. Again with the flames. And wait for it to, to go, back, go away. Use healing, damn you. There we go. Get it. And again, as long as you hit them enough to stagger them, they will never really recover. So let's uh, move further down here. And we have the last one that we can uh, we can take out before we get to the elevator over here. And going down. And there is actually a way if you see here. We missed some things on uh, the halfway point, so let's just go up, go back up, and then jump off halfway up. And we get a eh, golden room one, that's not much. But down here we actually get the first of our Sumba smithing stones that we don't know what to use for at this point. But uh, hey, we have it. It's probably useful since it was hidden away like this. Let's go into the boss. This boss honestly is a bit tougher than the other ones. My recommendation is only attack with uh, fully charged R2 attacks with uh, two-handers. If you have anything like fire grease or anything like that, then uh, use that and of course use the wolves to uh, distract and then if you do that it should be pretty straightforward so I'm going to be putting some fire grease on my weapon you'd think it wouldn't work because it's a fire giant but it works just fine nice amount of extra damage here and then we wait for him to get distracted by the wolves so we can go in and get closer to his legs I got one hard attack in 
I think I, oh, I still have my shield up, but you're not going to be blocking that one, that hammer with the shield, so it's just two-handed weapon, and I knock him down on two attacks. You might need a bit more than two attacks, depending on your power level at this point. Move to his head, get a visceral attack, and look at that nice chunk of damage we get here, and he's already almost dead, so just get a few more power attacks in. That's one more, and he does a big slam, and we just get him in there, and then he falls down. So we uh, handle that, and we uh, get a war medallion as a reward, and can head on to the next dungeon. Murkwater Catacombs. So again, catacombs means that there are a lot of those annoying little... Uh, uh, little gargoyle friends. So we go in here, and turn... No, just, just go in there. Yeah, there we go. Turn left. There's one. It doesn't aggro, so get in there, and uh, swing at it. There are two more. One is in the ceiling and one is on the wall. This one on the ceiling, wait for it to fall down. And the one on the wall is actually shooting fireballs. Somehow they can shoot fireballs when they are on the walls. You don't know. Um, but we just wait for it to come down. There it is. And attack. And then we counter. So if you know where they are, as you do now, then uh, this becomes really sim simple. You have a trap, uh, a pressure plate here in the, in the floor. We're going to use that. If it, to get some, to, but there's also, here we go, there's one here, I will roll on that and then roll to the side, and it actually basically takes care of, take care of that, so it shoots three times, and I want to see if I can, uh, oh, well, we were a bit unlucky, and they have now moved so much forward that I can use the pressure plate again, just hold up the shield, get the pressure plate and move to the side, that's pretty good, let's see if we can finish them off like this. And we kill those two without actually bothering, just using the pressure plate. We get five root resin. That's really nice to know. Five root resin. Root resin is always in need, so get it here if you can. And then we go move forward, and we now have unlocked the door to the boss fight. Here is another pressure plate that we can use. I go in. And, well, I didn't actually manage to trigger them, or so we have to do it the old school way. Got counter, and put off the visceral attack. And again, going forward, slash, and guard counter, and then that is dead as well. So we go in here, and this is where we now have, there will be one more, isn't there? Yes, it falls down. Well, that's all taken care of. And now we have the door that's open now because we well, we unlocked the lever so we can go in and deal with the boss fight. And if you are at all surprised at how we're going to deal with this boss fight, I don't know how you are, but uh, the strategy is pretty much the same. Powered R2s, fish for those while it's distracted by, by my wolves. Grave Warden Duelist, he has some nasty hammers, but you get one of those hammers, not the other one, but only one of them afterwards. So it's... it's uh, it's nice. Maybe you want to use that. Again, here we fish for that. That's one big attack in. And then I try to also do some guard counters like that. But I don't really get to it because he's attacking a lot of sequence. So just, just wait a bit and then wait for him to come down. And that's a good opportunity. Gives us a good stab. And then we are halfway done with this. And we can just follow up again. These get a bit tougher at this part. And we have to do just a few more. And there we go, the guard counter, but it didn't really hit. Just wait for him to do something. Yeah. And we got him down again. And apparently I didn't get the visceral. Uh, didn't hit correctly, but we got him. So what we get for the trouble is a battle hammer, and we can proceed with the next one. Murkwater Cave. The Murkwater Cave is a bit difficult to, difficult to get to because in order to get to the Murkwater Cave, you have to, to fight that PvP invasion boss that's outside. Oh, boss or boss, but PvP invasion uh, thing outside uh, Bloody Finger Nejus or something like that. And uh, he can be a bit uh, tricky, but the trick with that is just to uh, survive until the Golden Boy shows up so you can, uh, you can get some help and then it's a lot simpler. But if you want to fight him yourself, that is difficult. Yeah, there are two exits. We take this part first, because there isn't really anything interesting there. Uh, careful with the poison bombs. And we are cleaning out those. And I think there's a few more in here that we can just need to take care of. Yeah, yeah, go in there. 
just leap and then we have we see this glorious chest that we have to think ah that must be amazing what fat food is awaiting us it's gonna be exciting they're protecting with their lives what might it be <sighs> mushrooms five mushrooms that's what we get for the for our troubles all right well and dagger so let's take the other entrance or the exit from this uh, central room and see what we have here we have a glorious cave mouse it's not the fattest of loot we get from these lo locations here and we get into a boss arena so what might await us in here well there's a boss arena there's a chest but there is no boss hmm suspicious isn't it well let's just open the open the treasure chest and we get some useless uh, cloth gar cloth garbs and friend you scheming little thief the gods demand repentance all right so we have a uh, good old patches it's 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 nice to see patches so early in the game uh, on the other hand it's always like oh we don't want to kill him we don't want to kill good old patches he's so nice oh he's so funny he's, he's a classic we don't want to kill him but i guess we have to kill him right uh Though he's more of the groveling type, but he's also uh, the poking type. He's actually uh, quite pokey here. And you can't do any uh, usual wolves for this one, so you're gonna have to uh, fight the good old fashioned way. As you knock him down, uh, and could get a visceral attack, then he surrenders. And we got the enemy felled. And now he becomes our friend. All friendly. I knew you would. True and true. <laughs> and onwards to the next dungeon. We have the coastal cave. We get first the great point. And we, then we move in. Now the tougher part of this one, it's not particularly tough, but the fact is that it's such a dark cave that you really need the light, the, your torch here. So um, if you can see, well, you can't see because there's nothing really to see here. Uh, we are fighting a bit in the darkness and it's just really difficult to see what the hell is going on so i opt for uh, for the torch and no shield which makes it um, makes me play a bit different and uh, well not so not so good but yeah. yeah i waited too long i should have just gone in i have a two-handed sword so that's the reason oh knock on the wall there but generally, if you have this, you want to attack first, obviously, if you have longer range or when they're sort of in their startup animation, like this guy, we can just, as he uh, gets in, just do a jump attack, pretty good. Next one, can we also jump on you? Yeah, well, he decided to go away, but you can smash through this, these shields as well. At this point, we are one-shotting them. And that must be because we've been to the smithing, to the limb grave, and upgraded our weapon as a result. Yes, two more. We want to clean out everything that's in here. <laughs> I just jump whenever I can. Jump attacks are good. You also get iframes during the jump, so some a few. This is actually the boss arena, so uh, even though it doesn't look like it, this is the boss arena. I go into sneak mode and I turn the corner, go into these bushes, so sneak. Into the into here. If you have any way to buff your weapon, such as fire grease, use it now. I am not using the wolves immediately, but the reason why is because I want to get a visceral attack on the guy lying here. That's half of the boss. And go. And then I summon the wolves immediately while he's still recovering. And then all the hell breaks loose with lots of ads and all that crap. And uh, it just gets really confusing. Luckily, with our fired up weapon, we are one shotting all of these pretty easily. So again, now the idea is uh, to have them not focus on us, so that we can, uh, yeah, but I mean, the amount of damage we deal with this one is just, it's quite, quite a lot. There you go, he is also dealing a bit too much damage, but if you get the first one down, the point was that the wolves had found another target, the other half, and they just kept them distracted. If you get into the fight and have to fight both of them at the same time, it gets really complicated. Uh, especially for this early in the game it, it is just really complicated but if you can take split them up get the first one nuke it and then uh, focus on the other one or have the wolves focus on that that's super nice so you can see how easy it is for the second one as long as we we focus on one at a time 
we get the tailoring tools and the sewing needle. That's not really super, sounds like great things, but it's actually, if you uh, find a guy and uh, next to the telescope called Buck, the guy who's transformed into a bush, then he will be talking about, he was kicked out of the cave. This is this, this is the cave he was kicked out of. And if you come back after you've, you've uh, freed him and talked to him, then uh, he will be at the beginning, right with the grace. And uh, he will be happy that you found your his sewing kit for him. And he'll be uh, your seamster from then on. Now, instead of going out of this dungeon, we are continuing deeper into the dungeon because there's actually a bit more to this. It is also uh, uh, the only way to get out to the uh, out, out to the island of the church, Church of Dragon Communion. A few more. We've learned our lesson. Do the jump attack. Get the cave mouse. And there's a few more here. For some reason, I decide that I want to fight in the darkness. Which isn't really helping anyone. Not me, not you. Um, but then I get the better of it and decide that. You know what? It's probably a good idea that we can see what we're doing. And it doesn't take more than just a single slash to kill them anyway. So we continue up here. And then we have uh, come out into the light on the other side of the... The little strait of water and if we can go up here we can now look back right above our head is the entrance to the cave where we just came in that's the coastal cave right there and let's look on the map just so you are sure where we're looking at this is where we are and that's how you get to that location let's go into the next dungeon the death touch catacombs again catacombs you would think that there's little gargoyles but here we have skeletons ang mass and there are quite a few skeletons in this one so here there's two root resin, it's nice to have a bit of a root resin and uh, know where you can find it in uh, various locations. And if you have not realized it, I didn't realize it, when the skeletons are glowing, you hit them again and then they don't respawn. Otherwise they keep respawning, they keep respawning. So it is like, wait, get them down, wait for them to glow and then kill. Then they don't come back up. Very nice to know. I did not know that. So. Uh, uh, it got a bit dicey the first time I was here. But we are now doing this one. Just to make sure that it is nice and easy. We are going to kill these and wait for them to be dead. And then, well, dead skeletons are always dead. There's more. There are so many skeletons in this dungeon. They're luckily not particularly difficult. But they do take a bit of time. And especially because you have to kill them twice. There's a little... Uh, path here that we want to take for some reason that one didn't really bother to get up quick and then slash 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 it is a good idea to take this little path first because you can actually get up and take out the some archers that will make your make it really painful in the next zone uh, in the next little area and look around getting distracted and let's go grab that the flowers you can eat those flowers yeah, there's one skeleton, there's two skeletons here. And then remember to do it before they come back. Otherwise you just have to fight them twice. It's really, really quite a neat little trick. And there is another path there that we go out and then we come into a room that we are going to come to uh, in a second anyway, but we can also get an Uchi Katana. That is probably a really cool uh, weapon if you like those kind of things. And it's uh, hidden away here. And then, unfortunately, I fall down, which is not really what I wanted, because now I still have two archers on top that are shooting at me. And instead of being out here, please get out of the firing range. I'm full of arrows. There we go. Let's make sure that we go underneath here so we don't get hit so much with all of them. But you can see there gets quite a lot. You can see the one with the golden eyes. Golden eyes means that they get more XP. They don't seem more dangerous, uh, than, as I've told, but they give like four or five times XP. Notice how much we get when we kill it. 310 versus the normal ones that give us 62. Yeah, so five times as much damage. Oh, five times as much XP. Pretty neat. Okay, so uh, we've now dropped down to a location that we really shouldn't have. We should have stayed up there. But, uh, well, doesn't matter. We're going to have to clear everything. You can see the two archers are still shooting at us. Here we go. Uh, this is where we were supposed to go. Go in here. Pull the lever. And that opens the door to the boss. And we get some uh, blood rose crafting materials. For some reason, there's just many, many more skeletons. Now, there's still two more down here, somehow. Just smash them. 
go. And we can now move back this way. And this is where we were supposed to come from. If we sort of had the main path instead. Nope. Nope. And remove the resurrection. So this is where we, uh, we're coming from. This is where the little... Yeah, you can see that one. That's where we came from. Let's go out here again. Because, well, we did... Uh, we do want to make sure that we've killed everything and make sure that we've taken all the loot in here, if at all possible. And there are still two archers, and they've been hurting us, so we need to take care of them. Come on, slash. One more. And wait for the shot, and then you can also do guard attacks on... Let me just check if there's any more loot we're missing up here. Nope, there's not. Okay, so we can get the final one. And then it's all about sort of moving back. We got it. Now we move back. Uh, yes, this way. Nope. <laughs> it's always the other way. Let's move back to the start. And then find the door that is now open. Thanks to us pulling the lever there. I like these dungeons. They're, they're small and neat, and it's it's you get sort of the sense of accomplishment by doing them. But they're not like not like massive like the legacy dungeons. And we have the door opened, and we come up to the final boss of uh, this this little guide. And uh, well, if you skip to this one, then uh, it's gonna be a big surprise how we deal with this uh, this boss. Here, Black Knife Assassin. Somehow he is only at 60% health. I think it's because his weapon will actually heal upon dealing damage. So by him starting at 60%, then uh, as he attacks, he should be sort of healing up. But he will not get such a chance because we uh, are wolfing him. He's super easy. He doesn't have a lot of hit points. Very, very squishy. And we just fish for those attacks. And he staggers super easily. You can see every time the wolves are biting him, he staggers. The giants do not stagger this easy. Yeah, he does not really stand a chance. And he is dead. So, that was the final boss of this uh, little guide. I hope that you have uh, enjoyed it and maybe learned a thing or two, maybe found an item you've missed somewhere. If you have and uh, you've enjoyed it, be sure to hit the like button. If you have other ideas for future guides, let me know and I'll uh, take a look at that. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, take care and as always, stay effective.